So I know that you guys are covering pH, um, kind of chemical imbalances, things like that that you encounter in biology, that you're covering that in class. So I wanted to go over one of the key phenomena that happens in tumors. So one thing that cancer cells are good at is dividing into two, right? And they do this a lot. They are able to divide at a huge rate, at a very high rate. So what happens when you've got this mass of cancer cells that can divide so quickly, you can kind of see that in the middle here, they get so tightly packed around, because we're talking billions of cells that are being dividing and just actively like bursting in through this little tumor. What's happening is that oxygen actually can't get in there. So if we take a look at say one of these cells, deep in the tumor, usually when you have glucose, you can break it down with glycolysis. That's that first step, remember? And then you go on and you do the big Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, right? The thing is, is that without any oxygen, tumor cells don't do these parts. They only do glycolysis. What that means is that they still get two ATP, but they also produce something called lactic acid. So boats of this stuff is being dumped all in the tumor. And that has a really, really big effect on what these cells are like compared to normal cells. And remember that these cells, when they're dividing, they need tons and tons of, you know, they need proteins, for example, these little R groups with amino acids. They need carbohydrates that have like little rings. They need nucleic acids to divide. And most importantly, they need lipids to make their membranes. So not only are these cells dividing at a high rate, they're spitting out this lactic acid, but they're taking up all of the proteins the body has, they're taking up all the carbs, they're taking up all the nucleic acids, and they're taking up a lot of the lipids. So you can kind of start seeing tumors in some ways as a parasite. So back to the lactic acid, if you have, let's say a tumor, let's see all these cells in here, right? This giant mass of cells and they're spitting out all this lactic acid. This has a huge effect, not only inside the tumor, but in the surrounding environment. There are cells that usually act as kind of partner cells around, you know, within your body. Lactic acid, it drops that pH because it's shedding all these protons. When you have all these protons, they deregulate the cells that usually support the surrounding tissue. And oftentimes, you're just left with more room to grow. Say this black is the tumor. Not only that, but within an environment with this high pH, the cell survival of these tumor cells is boosted. And that is another key hallmark of cancers. It simply makes this environment really hard to penetrate. It makes these cells very resilient because they're surrounded by all this lactic acid that they're spitting out because they're dividing so much one of the absolute keys with a tumor, and this is the last one, is its reaction to the immune system. So here we have our big tumor mass. 
and it's spitting out all kinds of protons, and this means that the pH is low, because that's very acidic. Low pH equals highly acidic. One of the key things that this does is that normally the immune system sends killer T cells after cancer cells, right? The problem is when they try to get close enough to attack here, the acidic environment kind of poisons them. These immune cells aren't capable of functioning in a highly acidic environment. So the tumor in effect can simply repel them. Oftentimes they don't even survive to try and kill the tumor. That's one of the biggest issues with these large tumors is that the T cells can't get in there to kill them. When you actually see a tumor scan, for example, as well, what you're seeing is regions of high metabolic output, and they usually measure for that lactic acid. And that's how you visualize tumors, when they go away, when they come back, things like that. So this look into pH and its relation to the tumor and microenvironment gives you kind of this idea that tumors behave a lot like organisms, a lot like parasites in some ways. And not only that, they engineer an environment that's perfect for them, but detrimental to the host. It's what we call a feed forward mechanism because the more acidic it gets, the worse those circumstances get.